It says, hope all is well, fellas. Who do you think will be the surprise cut this year? Let me see if I can find whose name that was. That was Dustin Klein. Yeah, the surprise cut. Mm, unfortunately, I, I, don't, I don't like that game. I don't want to do that one. Did you get this one? Who surprise, you think surprise cut? cut? Yeah, man. It's personal for me. This is why I don't like throwing out the negative energy about I think this guy might not make it like in a surprise cut type of way. But Would Kendrick Green be a surprise? Depends on who you are. Right, because some people probably think he's still going to make the team because he was a third-round pick a couple of years ago yeah. and we're coddling him. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, I can't think of any surprises right now. I think of, like, in the secondary defensively. I think it could be a name potentially that would surprise Trey people. Trey Norwood. I think, like I think it's a couple names that could surprise people just based on what we do with some of these guys like Elijah Riley, for example, right? Coming into this offseason – he wasn't a name that was heavily mentioned in terms of making a roster. Spencer Anderson wasn't a name that was talked about in terms of making a roster, but both of them dudes have put themselves in positions where they're going to be in that conversation. Them type of dudes making it alters, you know, potentially some of these other guys at spots and that's the cause and effect and stuff like that. So I don't necessarily have a name I want to say, but I can see how, certain players even armand watson what he's been able to do of lately in practice and stuff like that how that could potentially have an effect on somebody else that would surprise us because we're like yo that player is a way better player but when we talk about the numbers element of it and it's like this position we need this guy here more than we need you because we got him him and him so it's that type of stuff for me that i kind of look at so there's two good comments in the chat mm-hmm Willie, the Steelers guy, 420, says Shannon Sullivan. That's, that would be a surprise cut. Yeah, it would. Yeah. That would be. And then mm-hmm. Bink the Patuzzi asked, would Pierre be considered a surprise? Um, I don't – I personally don't think it would be a surprise just because of where he's currently out on the depth chart. We drafted JPJ. We drafted Corey Trice. We also signed Pat P. And we still got Levi Wallace. So when you just talk about the amount of players there, granted, Corey Trice going down opened up a door for Pierre – but at the same time, you're still asking yourself, where do you see him on this particular team, this particular season, if everybody was healthy, right? Because we're not accounting for injuries. We're not planning for that. And I think that's part of the thing where you talk about – not Armand Watch, you talk about potentially an Elijah Riley making it as that slot dude. What does that do for a James Pierre? Or what does that do for a Shannon Sullivan? Because we all can't be here, right? So it's stuff like that that I think – how do the Steelers feel right. about Luke Barku, some yeah. of those other outside, Mar- Marjorie Harper, we yeah. brought him or in. Or even how Pat P has shown versatility to bump into the slot and how, like, today's practice, you got more of him working in the slot. So it's like, if they're viewing him there, well, what does It's that really say? that type of vibe, maybe, huh? That's what I'm like. Mo- so moving what these does, outside corners Yeah, around. yeah. That's what they're trying to do, at least from, you know, what's been going on in practice and stuff like that. So it's that type of stuff to me that I'm like, if they view Pat P's versatility to play in the slot like that, almost they, they might the, view him as okay. the number one slot. You see what I'm saying then. now, yeah. right? Yeah. So if they're viewing him like that, then maybe Sullivan or maybe Pierre's versatility or their value isn't as high as we might anticipate it being now because we feel like we got a guy that can do, we know he can play outside, but now he's showing he could be our true starting slot. JPJ is ready to go out there. Like that's the thing. But we'll learn a lot of that this weekend too, though. You know, because we're going to have everybody back out there. The only guys that aren't playing, Larry Ogunjobi, Nate Herbig, um, Trey Norwood. Those are the three. Uh I'm trying to think. It wasn't another name. Oh, yeah, it wasn't another name. So, yeah. I mentioned Norwood earlier as a mm-hmm. surprise, but if he's not playing in this game and he eventually gets cut, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised. Cause he's just, he hasn't been out there. Can't make the club in the tub, baby. And he was already on the fringe. Yeah. You saw uh, Phantom TV says Zach Gentry. I would be surprised. I would, but I wouldn't at the same time. The only reason I wouldn't is because of Rodney Williams. Similar. Wait, who? So <laughs> he's the, he's another tight end. Yeah, he was. Was that eighty seven out yes. there? Yes. Okay. So check it out, though. This is why. Okay. Okay. Who are your top two tight ends on the roster? Muth and Gentry slash Washington. I don't know. You're out there. You're, you're saying Washington. Okay. Washington, right? Yeah. 
who's the next most versatile player that you're going to use out of the group between Gentry and Connor? Connor. Mm-hmm. Not at tight end, but just but just in out terms on the field of like yeah, 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 that'd be the third guy that you put out there, right? So now, in terms of special teams, what special teams does Gentry play? I don't watch it enough or pay attention enough. Right. Is he is he out there at all? Nah, he's is not he a like, teamer. I was gonna say if he he's is, he's probably blocking. Right? Yeah, he's not a teamer like that. Whereas Williams Rodney is a teamer, core four. That dynamic is the part where I'm like, hmm. it would not surprise me to that extent. But it could at the same time because it's like obviously gentry has been here, you know? Yeah. And he's carved out a role on offense. But because of where Darnell is now, that changes the value there and along with how we're going to use Connor. So that's the part where I'm like, if Rodney can keep showing more, especially in this game coming up. What does he do on special teams? So he can play all four things. He's not a return man, though. But in terms of covering kicks, getting tackles, Gentry doesn't cover kicks. Gentry's not running down the kickoff. He, does he's he do blocking at all? Punt return, he's not running with dudes like that. You might catch him on kickoff return, but that's the extent of okay. it. He's just not that type of like, I'm just wondering why, player. Is, you think it's right for us not to have Gentry doing any special teams? I don't think it's a right or wrong thing. I look at it like a Matt Spaeth thing, though. Just his body type alone. Matt Spaeth wasn't going to cover a kick. Yeah. You see what I mean? Punt. You got to be able to do what? The first portion is blocking. The next portion is I got to cover this kick. Because you... Who are the who are our returning we talking about? Calvin Austin, right? Yeah, right. The the guys that are covering the kick aren't <laughs> yeah. necessarily just the gunners. It's yeah. everyone else that's you out there saying? as well. Yeah, I get I'm what you're like, saying. you do you want that out there trying to ch- like that? It just makes it tougher. Not saying that he can't, because he has shown at times. Like in practice, stuff like that. Sneaky but athleticism. It's, right. It's just it's a challenge though. And that's the part when you're talking about splitting hairs of who do you keep at that spot. Well, if this guy shows a little bit more athleticism in that aspect of his game, that gives you a little bit more value. Whereas when you're talking about Gentry right now, his best characteristic is his blocking. His That's his best characteristic. But it's like if this dude can show that he can do more than just this part and y'all are both in the same spot roster-wise because neither one of them are going to move up past the three we just named, right? So with that being the case, what between them two, who could do a little bit more? And that's the part I'm talking about. Like, I still think Gentry should be on this squad. I still think he will make this squad. Yeah, but I think having that's him. That's the one for me where I look at it. I'm like, that could potentially be one where it wouldn't yeah. surprise me if it happened because of that. Not saying it will, but because of that, it wouldn't necessarily surprise me. I like because we're talking viewpoint. surprises. No, yeah, I like surprise that. Cuts. I like that yeah. viewpoint because that's not something I would have considered at all. You heard what I said whenever you right. brought up the name Roddy Williams. I'm like, mm-hmm. who the hell is that? Yeah, but literally, <laughs> that's the only reason. It's not because I think Rodney's going to be a better tight end growing. You know what I'm saying? Like he's going to turn into an all-pro. No, but he do special teams better. And that's kind of the argument we had even when we talked inside linebackers, right, with Tanner Muse. It's like I feel like Tanner is going to have a strong case of making it just because of his special teams ability. Yeah. And him being the one that does that differently than any of them other dudes in that group. That's the part where I'm just looking like, all right, when we talk about them last couple spots – how do we come to that decision? All of those things kind of get put into uh, into that conversation. Yeah, because uh, I yeah. think Gentry, wherever you have him on the depth chart, it's mm-hmm. tight end two, tight end three, whatever. I think he'll still provide value to the offense. Cause you could get some three tight end sets out there. Come on now. Him, and Darnell, and Fryermuth. Absolutely. Or even if you wanted to mm-hmm. give Fryermuth a breather or put Fryermuth out in the slaughter, yeah. out at receiver, you could have Darnell and Gentry blocking mm-hmm. his tight ends. And, you know, that should yeah. obviously help the run game. But back to uh, Pierre. Yeah. I do think Pierre's going to make the team. So if he does get cut, I would consider that a surprise. I would nah. be surprised. What about Montrevis Adams? I saw his name come up here. Ooh. It would be because he's been around. We revamped that group, though. I know. Right? At the same time, if you really think about it, mm-hmm. should it be? Fioku's been born. Keanu Benton, Fioko. Come on, bro. Who else? John, my man, Jonathan Marshall. And that's your man. No, that's your man. It's Marvin Leal. Still got Ben doing his thing. Loudermilk. We said Benton already, yeah. Loudermilk. Mm-hmm. I know they're technically different positions on the depth chart, yeah. but what? I don't think there's that big of a difference between like Montrevis Adams and Marvin Leal and Loudermilk, yeah. right? They could, they could do. They could pretty much do similar things, but Leal and Loudermilk. A little more athletic, mm-hmm. younger. 
don't hate it. I don't hate it. But that's I why would, they would be called surprises, though. That's why these would be surprises. I would be kind of yeah. surprised. Uh, I, I would be kind of surprised at that. But at the same time, wouldn't be. It's a big yeah. cop-out answer, but. It's real, though. Honestly, I forgot about Montrevious Adams with this defensive line. I'm surprised you brought his name up. That's my big surprise. What do you say? I'm surprised the person in the chat brought that name up, Montrevious. I uh, forgot about him. Yeah. With the steel line. Well, yeah, because you got, it was Montrevious, Armand, like, Montrevious, Armand, Watts, and Loudermilk. To me, I'm like, all three of them, Fioku, they're all, like, battling for them little, you know, last one to two spots. So I'm looking at all oh, them dudes, like, all right, you making the play here. You doing something there. All right, you done put together a good practice. All right, who, who going to take it, though? You know? Phantom TV brings up Miles Killebrew. Mm, I would be surprised. Not because of the defense. It's more so because of special teams. That would have been like if uh, when, like, Robert Golden was here, Rosie, Danger, Derek Watt. Like, when you feel like you got, like, your special teams dude is like, hey, bae. Yeah. Like, that's kind of look at him. He's not giving us anything on defense. No, nah, he's – you see, I named all spe- like exclusive special team dudes. Like, yeah, that's why I wouldn't be surprised if he got cut. Yeah, because we just have so many good players. Like, how many guys can we keep specifically just for special teams? We already brought up Tanner Muse. I mean, you know, I mean, dudes playing special teams. You put eleven out there every single time. We need him to give us something on the offense or defensive side in case of or, injury, though, right? Like, or, Boykin can do no, that. No, no, Or them dudes that you're keeping because of how talented they are on offense, you need them to be able to give you something on special teams because that's the trade-off. If you're not my starting wide receiver, if you're not number Yeah, what do you think they're valuing third, more? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. If you're not the, I'm telling you, if you're not the third best wide receiver, you better be able to do something on special teams because I'm not keeping a fifth dude that could just run great routes and cook dudes but can't cover a kick. If you're not running routes better than Deontay Johnson, George Pickens, uh, uh, Allen Robinson, Calvin, like if you're not above that, I'm wasting time. I only could dress 46. So why would I keep this fifth dude who's a great route runner when you got to get hurt, you got to get hurt, you got to get hurt, and I still got to be willing to go with two high receivers for you to even get on this field. But I'm going to be covering kicks how many times in the game? And it's going to happen every game. And we've seen the Whether statistics. It's six or ten times, yeah. And the statistics show you get a return touchdown, you get a block punt, any of that type of stuff, your chances of winning 80%. You tell me if it's important or not. That's how I look at it. Is it going to happen every game? You hope not. But we've seen how teams get beat behind that as well. And that's when you're like, dang, bro, they need to improve their teams. Why don't you put this dude out there? It was like, well, who you going to put out there? He's a great offensive player. He's a great cornerback, but he can't cover nothing in terms of covering kicks because he don't want to put his face out there. That's the type of stuff you think about. Rod Dulles has Miles Boykins as his surprise cut. I wouldn't be surprised. I don't think I would be. Well, Every receiver room's deep. But then it goes back to the whole yeah, special team conversation absolutely. we're having right now. Yeah. Let's see. Who do we think is a dope receiver right now that we don't really use on special teams? Hakeem Butler, has he been doing anything? Have they been uh, giving him reps on special teams at all? I mean, he's out there. He's out there. But we'll say we'll say him, for example, right? If but he, he hasn't was, really done anything correct. as a receiver, at least in the first preseason right. game. But the potential is there, though, right? Because yeah. we would say Hakeem Butler has more potential at receiver than Miles Boykin. Yeah. Right? But if we're keeping five receivers, and we've named our four already, and it comes down to— I think to, we're going to keep six. Okay. Well, if we keep six, then hopefully it takes care of itself. I'm thinking Gunner for sure. Okay. And then, yeah, it comes down to Boykin or Butler. So then it's the same combo. Is Deontay playing special teams? Nah. George Pickens playing special teams? Nah. Is Allen Robinson playing special teams? Nah. Calvin Austin, we said, is a return, man. So you get put and kickoff return from him. Then after that, whoever your fifth receiver and your sixth receiver. So, so you done named four so, dudes that so are Akeem's, speed. Hakeem's not showcasing in special teams? All I've said is you name your four fast guys, right? Your four best receivers. And we haven't got 
a guy that we talking about play a core four just yet. Heck, even Gunner. Now, Gunner, he gives a little bit of versatility because he's shown that he can't cover kicks, yeah. not just be a return man. So I do like that part. So we're down to Gunner. And whatever we do with this last spot in terms of being able to at least have speed on kickoff. Kickoff coverage, punt, punt, return, right? Because now we done named five of these dudes. After that, we talking linebackers. We talking running backs. We talking corners. Safety, you know what I mean? So it's like, dang, your two fast positions are supposed to be wide receiver and DB. I would like to have some of that out there. Because if you slow on the covers team, that's just as bad. Yeah, I think it just comes yeah. down to Miles Boyk and Hakeem Butler. Yeah. So, you I, have, I, I wouldn't. Team dude, all I'm saying is, I wouldn't be surprised if it is Boykin and yeah. they felt like felt comfortable enough to put Butler out there on special teams. Nah. But I don't know what's going on in training. That's why I was asking right. you: Are they are they well, trying out Butler out there? But it's different. Like practice special teams is very different than game practice. Danny Smith is going to drill you, so it's like everything is condensed. I don't want you running far. I want you working the technique. You're not going to cover this kick live until we're in the preseason game. So that's the way, like, it's hard to gauge who's productive or not in practice. But that was why when we came in here on Monday after the game, I was like, bro, such such had this tackle. He had that tackle. He looked good on teams because that's when you really get a chance to see it. Yeah. Are you going and hunting that ball down on kickoff and, kick, uh, and punt? Are you making your blocks? I'm not as big on the blocks part. Because we know that's it's a crapshoot. It is very, very difficult. We're not blockers by nature. But you got to go get a tackle because the tackle means we're not getting points put on that board. If you can't get a tackle out here, bro, and we putting this defense up here with a short field, bro, what that do for us? That's killing us. Killing us. If you're the return man and you can't get this football to maintain possession, you're killing us. And if you're a dude that plays special teams and you're heavily penalized and every time the offense starts to drive, it's back 10, 15 Marcus yards. Allen. Come on, bro. You're killing us. I can't have that. So when we Did he get picked up anywhere? Actually, I don't think he I has. I don't think he has yet, bro. I saw he went, I thought he was on a visit, but I don't think he Tanner got Muse I don't think is he's the new Marcus right Allen here, for us. Yeah. But that's my thing. It's like you can just see how they're not overly important, but they can have a big time negative effect on you if they're not good enough. And that's what you kind of got to deal with. But that's building your roster up, right? You got to find that balance of how much talent is for offense, defense, how mm -hmm. much talent is for special teams. You don't make your whole roster based on special teams, but that's why it's a third of it. That's why it's, we're not talking about the first four receivers. We're talking about the last two receivers. Right. We're not talking about the first five DBs. We're talking about the last two DBs. So it's that type of combo with it, man. Ain't nothing crazy, though. James Lawson doesn't feel like Hakeem Butler is a stealer. He says mm -hmm. Butler is a big body, but just not a stealer. Mm -hmm. Someone else brought up a good point here. Uh, Hot Wheels vet ninety five. Butler drops every other pass. He did. I don't think he we did. should keep him. Whereas with Boykin, I've never seen him drop a pass anytime he's out there. Fair enough. It's just Hakeem has the the better potential. Or has a higher ceiling with the ball in his hand. We'll put it like that. Hakeem Butler with the ball in his hands has shown that he can do more with it. But in terms of playing and play out consistency, I do agree. I think Miles is the more consistent player. 